Anna Perot. I'm the author of Desire of the Heart, um, number one in the Yellowstone series. Desire of the Heart will be on tour with uh, Celebrate Lip Blog Tours in November, and I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of the, uh, I'm going to read the first chapter to you. I hope you enjoy. Chapter one. Could this view be more breathtaking? Katie Jackson set her backpack down and leaned against the jun Rocky Mountain juniper behind her. The stillness of the early morning hour, the gl golden glow of the light, and the breathtaking beauty around her made her gulp in the cool air as if she were starving, starving for another breath. The wind tousled her long brown hair. It touched her cheek just like a soft kiss her mother used to give her before bed. A sudden longing for her mother's soft arms overcame her, made her shake her head in disbelief. She had only been gone from home for a day, and already she couldn't handle the solitude. Technically, she wasn't even old by herself. Beside her cousin, Ashley, God was with her wherever she went. It was both a sobering and pleasant thought. Taking another large gulp of air, with the, the slight but permanent sulfur odor, Katie pulled out her camera and started snapping away. Trying to capture the way, she saw the beauty around her and knowing that she never could. The sky was amazing. Azure blue, it went on forever, only interrupted by white puffy clouds bouncing into each other. The majestic mountain range surrounding the expansive field, fields with knee-high yellowing grass demanded to be noted, respected. Welcome to this national park. Coming to this national park has been a brilliant idea. Katie patted herself on the back mentally while she raised her camera. The clicking of the shutter was the only sound that disturbed the quiet of the morning. I can get used to this place, she whispered. A bald eagle came swooping over the tree line surrounding the field. Her lens followed the majestic animal as it touched down beneath the tall yellow grass and seconds later took off with a large rodent clutched in his sharp talons. A shiver passed over her as the bird of prey let out a sh a shrill, its shrill call of triumph. Oh, Lord, thank you for letting me come here. It was, it seemed a shame to disturb the silence with her soft words of awe and gratitude. Packing up her gear and grabbing a bottle of water, she hiked further down the officially marked trail, knowing there was another breathtaking view waiting for her. This was Yellowstone, after all, the first national park in the world. Lost in thought and admiring the beauty, as she slowly walked along the dirt trail, she spotted another dark form meandering completely unhurried through the tall grass, perhaps 50 feet from her. Several things occurred at the same time. First, the muscles in her body froze immediately. Next, her fist shoved itself into her mouth to stop the scream that was forming deep in her suddenly paralyzed lungs. Simultaneously, a tremor cursed through her from the tips of her toes to the tips of her hair. Time stopped, and she was facing death. Staring at her through dark, beady eyes, working its bottom jaw, stood a bear. Not a cute, cuddly bear like Yogi about to steal your picnic basket, but a real, live, full-grown, grizzly bull with a hump between its massively muscled shoulders. Her head filled with stories of people getting mauled on their exploration of the West. One particular painting she had seen in the museum as a child became her foremost thought. She was unarmed and alone. She hadn't heeded the warnings at the ranger station to carry bear spray or to travel in a group. Uncertain of how much time had passed 
while they were sizing each other up, Katie finally managed to move her feet. She inched away from the certainty of death, never taking her eyes off her, the animal. Not only did her feet work, her lungs also became compliant, and a scream erupted from her mouth and rippled, ripped through the silence. The bear, who had been lumbering away, stopped abruptly, his beady eyes once again, once more, coming to rest on her. As if seeing her for the first time, he seemed to consider the mor morsel in front of him. He shook his mighty head, dust, dirt, and other debris spraying everywhere. The air became slightly pungent with a peculiar smell, raising the air raising the hair on the back of her neck. God, please don't let him kill me. I'm too young to be his lunch, she, she thought. Lungs and feet both in working order, they seemed to have understood the urgency for escape, the need to get away or be an early lunch. Without breaking eye contact with the now seemingly hungry bear, she stepped away slowly. You can't outrun a bear. It seemed appropriate to hear her father's deeply masculine voice in her head, so stay calm. Oh, that's easier said than done, she panted softly as she took another step. Every muscle, every sinew was bound tightly for her to take off in the sprint to save her life. Every thought screamed at her to run as fast as her legs could carry her. She fought the instinct and took another small step backward. Her eyes on the bear, her eyes on the bear, who now seemed to find her somewhat curious, tracking her with his gaze. Oh God, what do I do? He's way too interested in me, she gasped. Like a lightning strike, it hit her. Katie lifted her arms and started to yell. Please let this work, she thought. The bear seemed to take another moment to consider her, shook his massive head again, gave a loud huff, blowing tiny particles into the air, and lumbered away from her into the tall grass. Breath catching in her throat, Katie allowed her body to take over and ran in the opposite direction from the large brown object that now no longer paid any attention for, to her. The path was uneven and she stumbled several times but caught herself. Occasionally glancing behind her for evidence of pursuit from the 600 pound bear, she increased her speed over rocks and ruts scattered in the path, breath short and ragged, heartbeat wildly thumping in her ears claws ripping through her flesh. As her imagination took over, she stopped paying attention. Her right ankle twisted and her leg gave out, sending her diving across the path. Dirt, dust formed thick clouds around her, raining dirt on her back. Tiny pebbles and sand embedded themselves under the skin of her knee, skin she left behind on the trail. Katie rolled onto her back and bit the bottom lip hard, bit her bottom lip hard to prevent another scream from bursting from her mouth. A metallic taste mixed with dirt and tiny rocks crunched between her teeth. Pain undulated from her ankle up to her knee. Instinctively, she curled into a ball and focused on breathing through the agony. Now, why did you have to do that? she thought to herself. Tears stung her eyes and she panted hard. As the dust started to settle around and on top of her, she began to take inventory of various body parts. Touching her injured ankle turned her vision fuzzy. She ground her molars so hard she feared they would crack. Slowly, Katie rolled to s rocked to sit up. Take visual inventory. Taking visual inventory. Dirt, rocks, and other parts of the path were embedded under her skin. Blood was running down, uh, was running in thin rivulets down her legs. Her hands stung, and 
Upon um, uh, examination, Katie found them in the same state her, as her knee. Her arms were covered in thick, slick, gooey blood. Yeah, now she huffed, irritated of nobody but herself, and the breeze coming off the meadow beyond. Figures I would end up in this mess. When she recalled the reason for her accident, her breath quickened. She scanned the area, looking for the bear. Gone. At least she was safe. In pain, but safe. Katie moved her right foot. Brittle shards of agony sliced up her leg. Her breath caught when she searched for her equipment and her expensive camera. She discovered the backpack a few feet further down the path and winced as she tried to retrieve it and her green ball cap. With an extra long sigh, Katie settled into the shorter grass along the side of the path and contemplated her bleak future. She was at least a mile from the parking lot where she had parked her rental. Katie nibbled her bottom lip and glared at her steadily throbbing ankle and knee as if to make it stop, to make them stop. I won't make it back on my own, she whispered. It was comforting to hear her voice as fear started to grip her. Katie Jackson, you're in trouble. Knowing that if she took off her boot, her boot off, took her boot off, she'd never get it on again. Katie untied her right hiking boot and carefully pulled down the, her thick socks for a visual inspection. Her ankle was turning black and blue, swelling up nicely like a balloon. God, how do I get out of here? She was at Yellowstone Park, a mile off the road on a fairly well-traveled trail. Come on, Lord. There have to be other people who walk along this trail. I mean, it's the middle of summer, for crying out loud. This is the most visited park in the world. Talking to herself, to God, out loud, was making the butterflies in her stomach's, stomach calm down, allowing her to breathe a tad more easily. So would you please see fit to send someone down this path before the bear returns and does turn me into lunch. The thought of the grizzly returning shoved her unsteadily to her feet. The blood on her knees was beginning to dry and standing up irritated the skin, making the wound bleed again. Katie stuffed her long dark brown hair through the hole in the back of her ball cap and contemplated her next move. Katie, perhaps going out by yourself wasn't the most brilliant idea you've had. She hobbled a few feet forward. Pain radiated up her leg and dispersed somewhere around her hips. Her breath caught as her thro throat burned. If she didn't make it, would her cousin even know where to look for her? You have to do it. Nobody is around, and it's just you, it's you, just you and God. And sorry, nobody is around. It's just you and God. And he is not taking any more calls right now. Immediately, Katie felt bad for her snide remark. She didn't believe it. It was her own fault that she was stuck here, but somehow God would get her out one way or another. Put one foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking across the floor, she sang out of key. When her ankle and knees gave out, she rolled she lowered down to the ground before she caused any uh, more harm to herself. Change of plan, she groaned. Sit down before you fall down. Finding a tree to lean against, Katie swiped at the sweat on her face, wincing as she remembered her, that her hands were bloodied. I must look like I was mauled by a bear. Lips quirked into a smile. Rummaging around in her pack for some tissues, she was tempted to leave it. Tears began to run down her cheeks as she attempted to clean the gash on her knee.
on her knee. She was nearly done when she thought she heard footsteps coming her way. Cocking her head, she was determined that cocking her head, she determined that it was not the bear having changed his mind. The air that had been trapped in her lungs burst out at the sight of someone coming toward her. Another steadying breath put her right again. Thank you, Lord. I guess you were taking my call today after all. The person came closer, and as she recognized the uniform, Katie determined that perhaps she had thanked God in, uh, prematurely. She shifted uncomfortably on the ground, rocks and pebbles thro poking through the skin of her, uh, the thin fabric of her shorts. How would a ranger react to her sitting by the side of the trail, bleeding by herself no less? with a bear roaming around. Katie swallowed the thick goo in her throat. Ma'am, you're hurt. What happened? <laughs> the ranger was by her side in a flash. I, I think I'm okay. Really? She must look like she had survived an attack by space aliens. I was startled by a very big bear and I tripped and twisted my ankle. His eyes opened wide and he searched the area. His hand went to his weapon at his side. Did it hurt you? Katie lowered her head, twisted her finger, fingers, and felt ever so foolish. No, but the trail did. When I fell, I twisted my ankle and scraped my knees. A soft, irritated breath escaped the ranger's mouth. He lifted his wide-brimmed Smokey the Bear hat off his face, pewter eyes, Pewter eyes searched her. Why is there blood on your face? Before she could come up with a good enough answer, the ranger slipped on latex gloves and probed her scalp, scalp carefully. If she had known she was going to be inter interrogated like this, perhaps she wouldn't have asked God for help. Uh, I, she scrunched up her face. I, I wiped the sweat out on my face. The ranger's mouth twisted. Then he cleared his throat. Ma'am, did the bear chase you? And where was it? Again with the questions, Katie pointed. I first saw him over there at the edge of the meadow. And no, he didn't chase me. But he was watching me closely. I might have heard his stomach growl. With a near audible Inaudible snort, the ranger rifled through his pack and came up with a rectangular box with a red cross on it. This is going to sting, she hissed from the reaction of the alcohol swab on the cuts of her knees. No kidding. The throbbing sensation rattled through her whole body. I'm afraid I'll have to take you to the clinic. This ought to be cleaned up properly. May I take a look at your ankle? Might as well get on with it, she thought as she grunted and nodded her hair once. Uh, her head once. This might hurt a bit, he said as he gently untied her laces further. Fire ascended her leg as soon as he touched her ankle, determined not to scream. She puffed out shallow breaths, like she had seen her mother instruct the women who were in labor. I'm sorry. It's not your fault she panted, sweat beating on her forehead. He rummaged through the box and came up with an ice pack. After breaking it in his hand, um, he held it to her ankle. Katie gave a whimper and flattened her lips together. The <clears throat> ranger secured the pack in place with a, with a bandage. My truck is at the end of the trail, uh, is at the end of the trail in the lot. Let me help you, ma'am. He, he inspected her face. With a lopsided grin, he pointed to a pack of wet whites. May I, Miss, Ms. Katie frowned, then nodded her head. Her parents had taught her to be, to respect those in uniform. It's Katie Jackson, and yes, you may. Thank you. With quick 
and nimble fingers, he cleaned most of the blood off in no time. He reached for his radio hooked on his belt. What did the bear look like? Big. A definitely irritated scowl crossed his face. The gray eyes measured him coolly. Big? What color? Brownish gray or black? Katie's face warmed. She felt like a fool. It was definitely brown. And did I mention it was big? It was a grizzly. The ranger cleared his throat, set his mouth in a firm straight line. He held the walkie-talkie to his lips. Sandy, it's Grant. I'm on up a terrace about a mile from the parking lot. We had a bear sighting. No chase. Just a sighting. The radio crackled. Thanks, Grant. Oh, yeah. It was a grizzly, and it was big. His lips tightened around the edges. His eyes focused on the horizon. And we have an injured hiker. At this, he frowned down at Katie. Her eyes widened at the realization that she was the aforementioned injured hiker. <clears throat> I'll be taking her to the clinic. Scraped knee and hands and twisted swollen ankle. Nothing life-threatening. I'll be back in touch once I've completed that task. Roger that, Grant. Static followed. <clears throat> Grant McClintock scanned the, the area again, making sure that the bear hadn't doubled back, doubled back and was rethinking his breakfast plans. The bears this year had plenty to eat this early in the summer, since it had been, it had been a relatively mild winter. Some of them had come out of hibernation earlier than normal. This injured hiker was a huge inconvenience. He was very order his very orderly morning was turning chaotic, something that made his stomach twist and it wasn't the four cups of coffee, uh, office coffee he'd co he had consumed this morning. Grant hadn't planned on escorting her back to the parking lot a mile away or transporting her to the clinic. It would take hours before he was back on the, on the trail, all alone with nature. He had other plans to patrol, other, other paths to patrol, before he could give a tour in the afternoon. Lately, Yellowstone had seen an increase in d drug activities, activity, and it was part of his job to control that. His, he, he gently probed the swollen foot. I think, I don't think your ankle is broken. He scrubbed the back of his neck. Give me your hand. I'll help you back to the parking lot. The young woman, who looked much better now that her face was cleaned of the blood, rewarded him with a look. He had seen that one before in Bridget's face and found himself hard-pressed not to laugh. I told you, I can get myself there. It's just going to take me away. a while. Maybe the rest of the remainder of my vacation. Let's do this my way, shall we? The day was getting away from him. On top of this, he would now have to fill out a report. With a deepening scowl, he s stuck his hand out, out in her direction. Give me your hand. You do recall that there is a bear lumbering around somewhere. That got her attention since she, her fa face bail, paled ever so slightly. She accepted his offer and stood swaying on her own two feet. Grant stuffed the soiled gloves as well as the bloody wipes into the trash bag he carried with him and stowed everything in his pack. Good to go, he asked, trying to keep the irritation out of his vo voice. Mm -hmm. Her lips pre were firmly pressed together. This was going to be a long mile. He supported her as well as he could, but after a few steps, the injured woman groaned in pain and sank back down to the ground. He swallowed down the, his annoyance and raised his eyes to the sky. Why had he bothered to get up out of bed this morning? Something was not right. Ashley Jackson forced her eyes open, squinting around the unfamiliar room. 
The twin beds, ne the bed next to hers was empty. Rumpled sheets left in a heat. heap. Where in the world had Katie gone? Slipping from the warm sheets, she hurried to the small living room kitchen of their rented cabin. It too was eerily quiet. On the way back to the bedroom, uh, I'm sorry, on the way to the bathroom, she stubbed her toe on their, uh, on their open suitcases sitting in the middle of the room and hopped the rest of the distance. After knocking on the door and receiving no answer, she sat down on the uh, worn checkered sofa. They had only arrived uh, last, late last night and already her cousin had ditched her in a very unfamiliar manner. The Katie she knew would never sneak out in the pre-dawn and head to an unfamiliar national park on her own. When her younger cousin had suggested they take the trip together to Yellowstone, Ashley had been more than happy to go with her, although she would have preferred a trip to New York City. And now Katie was MIA. Ashley went back into the bedroom and searched for a note she may, may have left. Her cousin wasn't known for her adventurous spirit. The last time Katie had done something scandalous, they had been about 10 years old, and she had gotten them both into such trouble. When their fathers had found them, sitting in the hayloft, waiting for their punishment, Katie would always leave a message. Ashley checked her phone again. What was Katie thinking, ditching her on the first morning? Not even leaving her a note. Her cousin was showing some strange behavior of late, but this beat them all. Of all the irresponsible, Ashley's gaze was drawn to a scrap of paper stuck by a magnet of a local rec restaurant to the front of the stainless steel fridge. Oh, feeling a little foolish from her interner, internal rant, Ashley scan uh, scrambled closer and detached the note, written on the back of a takeout menu and scribble scribbled in pink crayon. I was up, had to get out. The sky was amazing. Gone hiking. I know, right? All by myself. Can you believe it? Love ya, Katie. Ashley couldn't help but laugh. So thank you for um, joining me today. And as I said, um, Desire of the Heart, number one, it's backwards, but sorry. Um, Desire of the Heart, number one in the Yellowstone series is uh, going to be on tour in November with Celebrate Lid blog tour and uh, number two is already out uh, for better or for worse is out and available on both kindle and uh, in paperback have a